So we're going to install Deepin on, um, on my laptop. So let's do that. Now with Deepin you only have two choices, run it on the virtual box or install it on the virtual box or install it on your hardware. There is no other option. So I just thought I'd record this in my phone, see how we go. Just to show you how the Deepin installer works. It will take a while to find, it's going to take a little while, there's a few partitions on here so it's just going to take a while to find everything. It's one of the drawbacks with um, Deepin installer, or Deepin itself, is you cannot try it in a live environment which is a bit of a downfall for Deepin. And this is the 15.5 uh, by the way. Okay, so there we go, English, next. Lower case on this one here. I don't want to be called column PC. Column deep in will do. Okay. Perfect. Now we have a simple mode, an advanced mode. I want to install it on here. I've got the new 2018 Ferrum there, so I want to keep that. Probably got to st install everything and up update it, but that's all right. This one is the older ISO. It's, they're probably on par, but that's all right. Um, if I install here, DPIM will just do what it wants to do, but I want to go to advanced mode. So I want to choose my bootloader, but I was having trouble with this one before. So that's ext4. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, so I didn't see that little bit there before. So ext4, mount point, so I didn't select this stuff before. Then format the partition. Okay. That's where I went wrong before. I didn't see that little, little edit box on the side there so I, I messed it up and I started again. So now I can change my bootloader to the same partition that I'm installing to. Go back. That's done. That's the difference with advanced. You can do that. It allows that's the main thing. I want to change the bootloader target. So that's the difference between simple and advanced. On simple it would have done that formatting and stuff for you anyway. So now we can start the installation because I want to continue Antigos to control the grub and that's the reason why I did that. Format device SDA2 partition as mount point type is ext4, yep, continue. see how long this takes. It's a beautiful looking distro. A lot of people question whether, because it's from China, whether there's any spying and so forth. But I had watched a, a video, one of Quid's Up's videos, and he's done a, you now he's into security. And he knows a fair bit, and he bamboozles my mind with some of the things he says. So he knows what he's talking about, and he's done quite a thorough check. Not that his checks are 100% um, correct in saying there's no spyware, but I trust pretty much what he says, and he's gone through it and he can't find anything. So 
If Quid's up can't find anything, I pretty much trust what he says anyway. So, but Deepin does have its issues. I, I wonder whether, if you're a themer, which I am, Deepin's pretty much not for you. So you either, you can theme the icons, but theming the buttons and and the and the controls and everything uh, tend to not work. The last time I used it, their dark theme didn't even work. It was just on their light theme, and that was it. Didn't even change to a dark theme, as far as the 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 header board, not the header board, the the title bar and all that sort of thing. So, um, so I think it's either take it as it is or leave it, uh, pretty much. Um, but as far as icons go, and wallpapers, and that is not a problem. So, and they do. I think the reason why they do that is because they have different. If you, when you run deep in, you'll find that their movie player and certain apps that they've got within there, and they're all part of the deep in apps. You will find that some of the windows have a dark window, some of them have a light window, so probably they don't want you messing around with that because it changes the aesthetics of how they've got it set up. So I can sort of understand that in a way. So that's probably one of the reasons that they've locked that down. So this looks like it's not going to take too long anyway. We're already seven minutes in. And see the black windows there on the movie play. You can see it on the, uh, as that uh, uh, little uh, thing scrolling by there. The, it shows you the slideshow. You can see some are dark, some are light. So that's probably why they don't want you messing around with the aesthetics and they've locked it all down to suit the deep in apps. That's what I would think anyway. I hope the video quality is not too bad anyway. should be good enough to give you a perspective on how the, how the installer works. It's the only way I can do it. I may not edit this out. I may just let this um, this whole video run through when I upload it to YouTube. Uh, WPS Office. Well, that's probably one thing I'd probably take out. I don't really like to use WPS, it's uh, proprietary and the problem I have with WPS is it's compatible with, with Microsoft Office. LibreOffice is compatible with Microsoft Office but WPS is not compatible with LibreOffice and that's the problem I have. And why that is I don't know. So why is it compatible with Office, Microsoft Office, compatible with um, LibreOffice. That doesn't make any sense to me. So if you're either running WPS or you're running LibreOffice, but I have to think there's a lot more people running LibreOffice than WPS. Unless that situation's changed, I'm unaware of that. But if you read it up, which I did, I'm pretty sure the last time I did was probably a while ago, but definitely WPS was not compatible with uh, LibreOffice. And I have a problem with that. There you've got some dark windows there in the terminal. So we've hit the 10 minute mark. Some utilities there, you've got a light one for the calendar, dark one for the uh, calculator.
So I think uh, I'm pretty sure that the um, slideshow's run through a few times now, so I'm going to pause here and, and come back. Okay, so it's successfully installed. And uh, I'll just click experience now, I think, which will uh, please remove the installation media before reboot. There we go. Experience now, which will cause a reboot now. Now, as you will very well see, the Ferran OS is still there on SDA2. What I need to do is, and you can see the Antigos um, boot screen here is quite a nice boot screen. So we're going to boot into Antigos. Trying to reach around my camera doesn't help. Okay, so what we need to do is update the uh, Antigos Grub menu. I could record this in Antigos, but um, I'll just continue on the phone because it's quite a quick process anyway. Antigos Noom, Gnome Noom. Go into our terminal. I'll just arrow up because I've got my, um, can I zoom in on this, see, so, have you zoom in, there we go, control plus, I just did that, didn't work, must have been pressing the wrong button, so if I arrow up, there's my command, I shall run that command, And that's the command in a arch base distro. I'm pretty sure it's all arch, arch base distro. So if it's controlling the grub, every time you reinstall to one of those partitions and you, you install your bootloader to the same target partition as the root, file, the root partition, and then you run this command, and there it is, it's found deep in. Actually, I have to say, this is probably easier than, than Ubuntu base because there's two commands to run in Ubuntu base. Just trying to remember what those commands are. So there we go. I'll shut down, restart. Oh yes, it's OS Prober. And then it's Update Grub, that's the ones. So now we go down, there's Deep In, instead of Ferran. And we've got the other Ferran down here, right there. It's all right, Ferran, I haven't deleted you all together, I haven't muted you.
I thought we can get a good look at that. Password, enter. So my grub is intact. All my other options are there. All my other partition boot options are there. So, and Deepin is there and up and running. So there we have the Deepin installer and install. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope uh, helps somebody. And thank you for watching.